The following is an exclusive podcast. I don't suppose they uh, told you anything in Denver about the tragedy we had up here during the winter of 1970. I heard a man named Charles Grady is the winter caretaker. From what I've been told, I mean, he seemed like a completely normal individual. But at some point during the winter, he must have suffered some kind of a complete mental breakdown. He ran amok and uh, killed his family. Well, you can rest assured, Mr. Ullman, that's not going to happen with me. <laughs> that's right. Mom, they really want to go and live in that hotel for the winter. Sure I do. It'll be lots of fun. The only thing that can get a bit trying up here during the winter is uh, the tremendous sense of isolation. Is there something bad here? I fear you will have to deal with this matter in the harshest possible way. I killed you with Danny. You did this to me. Didn't you? I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains. episode of have you seen this yet my name is oscar my name is araceli and today we are gonna review a movie that's basically based on real life right now isolation (laughs) exactly just like right now what are we doing we're gonna be reviewing the shining the shining the classic american horror story written and directed written by stanley kubrick written by by Diane Johnson and Stanley Kubrick. Now, do you know what other movies Stanley Kubrick did? Yeah. He did the 2001 A Space Odyssey. Which, by the way, is an amazing movie. Have you seen that? No, I haven't. I've seen pieces of it. Okay. Yeah, but I haven't haven't seen it. Like, the pieces that I've seen is the one where, like, he's in the bed. Yeah, yeah. And he's just, like, going through it. That is one of the... That movie has one of the most imitated songs in... The whole world. Have you heard it? The da 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 da. Don't 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 don't. No. Is that w- really? Is that where it came from? That's where it came from. Really? Yeah. Oh, when they're all oh, when they're in space, right? Yes, that's right. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Stanley Kubrick also directed Doctor Strange Love. Have you seen that one? No. That is the movie based on the creation of the atomic bomb, and it has one of the best uh, closing scenes in a movie ever, where they're trying to deploy the atomic bomb, mm-hmm. and it gets stuck. So is it with what's his face? Um, he had the mustache, right? Yeah, uh, then, Willy Wonka. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah, I was gonna I'm say Young Frankenstein. I was gonna say Young Frankenstein because he, as well. he was also in that movie. Uh, well, um, he also directed A Clockwork Orange. Oh, I love that one. You know what? I've only seen bits and pieces of it. I've seen parts of it. I haven't seen the whole movie beginning to end. Oh, it's really good. I, it? I feel like it partly ends up taking like something from a space odyssey. Okay, because it. It feels like it's kind of futuristic, right? But at the same time, it's not, right? Because it wasn't in the seventies. It still has that seventies feel. Yeah, of course. And you know what? That's the one thing about I, I like about Stanley Kubrick's films. Yes, they were in the seventies, but you can tell they were made in the seventies. Yeah, and it's very I feel, no. I feel like just like mostly the vibe. Yes, exactly the vibe. <laughs> he also directed Full Metal Jacket. Fucking love it. You know what? I saw that movie once and it changed my life forever. This is my rifle. This, this is, is my gun. gun. <laughs> <laughs> that that fucking scene in the restroom though. Where is it the one where they beating him up with soap? Or where he kills himself. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and then uh the, the, the Asian lady. 
with the me love you long time. Oh, yeah. I remember that specifically. <laughs> That's a life changer, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that movie, man. That movie. This, uh, the movie stars Jack Nicholson, Shelley Duvall, Danny Lloyd, and the amazing Scatman Crothers that plays Halloran. Okay. Which is the, 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 one of the caretakers of the Overlook Hotel. No. He was... Is he a caretaker? He's, I said he's like... No, you're right. You're right. He's a, a, basically like a henchman. Yeah. He just walks... A caretaker. I said it. And you said no. So I changed it to make it more PC. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, we have to talk about this movie. And how awesome it was. Because uh, we did an earlier episode for Black Swan. And I told you that I, I really like watching movies that show somebody's descent into madness. Oh, yeah. And this one was the exact thing that I love to see. Because Okay, so already, as the movie starts, it fucking starts so creepy. Mm-hmm, yeah. Like... The, out of the music, you know, that oh, fucking song, my that God. little theme. That movie is... Hey, did you know that that song was created by Wendy Carlos and Rachel Elkin? Which, by the way, have only done A Clockwork Orange. Really? They have done nothing else after that. They did A Clockwork Orange, The Shining, and done pretty much nothing else after that. Wow. So they're just collecting their royalty checks. Money, money, money. Money, money. Because um, Dr. Sleep, the same, same score. Thing. Yeah. Same, Same score. score. However, I did notice that a lot of the music from that movie is just most, mostly noises brought oh. to a certain degree of like, <sighs> like brought up to a level 10. Yeah, um, I was watching it. I think it's the one where Shelly, Shelly Duvall's character is walking around. Yeah. And it's just like the either viol- violins or something. They're just scratching the yeah. shit out of That's it. That's it. That's it. That was a good. That was yeah. good. They did really good. Yeah, really when good I was music. listening to that, because I pay so much attention at the scores, mm-hmm. just to be like, yes, perfect with that scene, you know? Right. So, like, when that was going on, I'm like, they just didn't even care. They're like, let's ruin these violins right here. <laughs> <laughs> now, a lot of people have said that The Shining is one of the, the greatest horror film of all time, but did you know... Back in 1981, this specific movie was nominated for the Golden Raspberry Awards. Now, the Golden Raspberry Awards are nominations for the worst movies of that year. And The Shining was nominated for Best Director and, uh, excuse me, Worst Director and Worst Actress for Shelley Duvall. Seriously? Seriously, 1981. Oh my God, all that foot pain and work that she went through? Yeah. Let me just tell you. (laughs) Okay, so... For that, um, for that one scene where she's she has the bat and Jack is following yes. her. Yes, yes, yes. That took that was a hundred and twenty seven takes. Mm-hmm. She was so dehydrated. She. Um, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains in. <laughs> she was so dehydrated. You see how she's just clenching with at the um, bat the yeah, whole time. Yeah, like. Towards the end, like, her hands were so raw because so much handling that wouldn't bat. And, like, her voice was all cracked. And, like, she was just done. Right. Because it was 127 takes. And, like, even uh, Jack mentions, like, he even talks about it, like, that he was so mean to her. And with everybody yes. else, he was so fine. He was okay. I heard about that. And, like, um... I heard that also uh, the director was a piece of shit to Shelley Duvall just to get her in yeah. like an emotional state, like in a very like, like up in a corner, always on edge, walking on eggshells. Yeah. Like, um, he kept Duvall isolated from everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Like, Jack was recalling that he, like, he remembers him telling the whole crew not to talk to her, not to help her with anything. Like, don't even sympathize with her. Oof. Just leave her alone. Yeah. Uh, that's, like, what he, that's what, um, Jack recalls from, like, that whole thing because he also remembers, um, how different Stanley was with him yeah. than when he was with her. Yeah. Like, he treated her just like shit. Yeah. And it was just... Like, he didn't even praise her at all after for, like, the great job that she did. Because um, I have a quote from her. Okay. It says, um, after, you know, afterwards with all the filming and ended, this is what, like, she recalled. 
It was like some sort of primal scream therapy, almost unbearable. But from other points of view, really, ve- really very nice, I suppose. After the day was over and I, I cried for my 12 hours, I went home very content. Yeah, I had had a very calming effect. Like, you can feel that she was just, like, she was, traumatized. Yeah, yeah. Like, she wants to say that it was a bad experience, but then she feels like she doesn't want to trash her career for that movie. True. I don't remember her doing many more movies after this. I know. I remember her from Popeye. Yeah. I, oh, my God. <laughs> Popeye. <laughs> I mean, that is both a good and a bad movie wrapped up into one. Yeah. But go on. Like, um... She was, she even said that it almost, she almost wanted to end her acting career after that movie. I I do remember hearing that, huh? Like, she was done. Like, she didn't want to go through anything like that again. And then, like, and then there was Stephen King that after seeing that movie, he fucking hated it. But he hated it because they changed a lot of his book. Have you read the book on The Shining? I didn't, but, like, when I was doing the research, he hated it because how they portrayed Wendy's character. Like, they made her seem like she was so useless when he wrote her as a strong person. Yes, yes. And then he, so, what he ended up doing was just making his own, um, his own version of it in a miniseries. Right. In 1997. Have you seen that miniseries? I haven't. It was on, uh, it wasn't on Netflix. It was on Tubi. It was on Tubi a couple of months back. I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't see it. But it was on there, and I do hear that it's more book-based. Yeah, yeah, because Stephen King was the one who directed it. I, yeah. I, I'm sure. Yeah. Because he wanted, he really wanted, um, <laughs> when, right now, because I looked at my notes, and I just seen Jessica Lang. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's because <clears throat> um, they actually wanted Jessica, Stephen King wanted Jessica Lang to play Wendy, mm-hmm. but then they ended up going with Duvall. Yeah. Because that's what uh, Stanley kept insisting, Duvall, Duvall, but Duvall. But she was still a good choice, though. Yeah, but I feel like, with Jessica Lang, I think it would have really hit different though. She, yeah, yeah. she seems like a horror queen. I've seen Jessica Lang in uh, American Horror Story. She's so good, at and it. she's very oh my god, so she's talented. so good in American Horror Story. But yeah, I think you're right. I think if uh, Jessica Lang would have done it, it would have been a whole different movie. But I think it was the fact that Shelley Duvall just you believe. That she is in fear for her life. She is every single second. She of is, this movie. and but but not many actresses can do that. I know, she was actually crying throughout the whole movie. Yeah. That was that was all real. Like yeah. it was all like fear. Like he, Stanley basically <laughs> brainwashed her into believing like it's real. Yeah, you need to believe this. Oh my god! But it's uh, it was such an a, an amazing movie that from the very beginning. From the very beginning of the movie, it flat out tells you that Jack Torrance is a bad guy. Yeah. From the very beginning. Okay, so when they're finally driving to the hotel as a whole family, the way he starts talking to Danny, mm-hmm. it's just so fucking creepy. Yeah. Shit. Can we stop? And we're back. You know, it's quarantine time. It's stay at home. So when your family calls, you got to pick up the phone. Exactly. So, go ahead. <laughs> All right, so, uh, yeah, so we were talking about how creepy the ride to the hotel is. Yes. So, like, on the right there, like, Wendy, Shelley Duvall, she's talking about, oh, I heard about, like, this place is, was, was it the settlers that they said? Yes, 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 yes. It was the settlers that they died, It right? was Native Americans. Native Americans that yes. died in that area. And then um, Danny is like, was very curious about it. Mm-hmm. So he starts asking questions. So the way that Jack is answering those questions is just so creepy as hell. But man. at the same time, if you notice, when they first get to the hotel, the Jack Torrance is like a lot more lighthearted, like a lot softer. Like he's a lot... Um, he's put up a front. Yes, he's put up a front. Even when he sees the bartender, he's like, hi, Lloyd. Like that. Yeah. He's very happy. But as the movie progresses, you just see him start going deeper and deeper and deeper. Because isolation, isolation's a, a motherfucker. And I hate to say that word, but it is. Okay, yeah, it that's 
that's part of what happens with him. Mm -hmm. But also, you got to remember, he's an alcoholic. Yeah. So Raging alcoholic. He's an abusive alcoholic. Yeah. All right? He's an abusive alcoholic. And then going to a big old hotel for the winter, so huge as hell. And he's still, like, starting off with his AA. Mm -hmm. It's going to be so hard for him. Yeah. That it's something that's bound to happen. Mm -hmm. Something like, you know, he's going to, like, do some crazy ass shit. True. Very true. And the way that Stanley Kubrick directed this, because the... the, Okay, so I wrote down the the keys to horror, which is the perfect horror movie. This is something I wrote down. Okay, I'm looking at mine. There's three things (laughs) that that I... There's three things that I like... When it comes to horror, there's tension, Mm -hmm. the atmosphere itself, and mystery. Mm. And The Shining has all three of these. It has them all within the opening of the movie. Within the first 30 minutes, you already know this is going to be a fucked up movie. Yeah. From the very beginning. Yeah, because um, they're showing you... Jack is a different, completely person as how he wants to view himself with with everybody. Mm -hmm. And then you see Jack on that drive with his family. Yeah. That different side that his family knows and not that not anybody else knows, you know? Yeah. That abusive and also mental abusive. Yes. Oh, my God. It's not just physical, but mental. Let's talk about that one scene where he's in, in, in the office in the Colorado room and his wife literally just comes in to ask him something and he says, you want to help me? You get the fuck out of here. Yeah. When he's like, you hear me typing? I'm working. And it's like, relax, my man. Relax, dude. You're literally the three of you in that hotel. <laughs> <laughs> she obviously needs company. But if you, if the way that Stanley Kubrick shot it, just it brings in, you know these people are isolated. Yeah. Because in many of the shots, they're all by themselves. And then you can also see like the fear in her eyes yeah. every time every time he talks to her. Right. It, and it's like, She's just waiting for him just to hit her or something. And that's where it comes into walking on eggshells. You just don't know what his mood is going to be. Yeah. It's so nuts. And then he starts typing, uh, all, 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 play, work. all work and no play make, makes Jack a dull boy. Yeah. Oh, I, I can live my life off of that moniker. I think that resonates a lot right now in these times oh exactly <laughs> I, I swear to god i wanted a typewriter just to write that constantly <laughs> and then just post it on all my stories i'm doing fine you guys i'm doing fine guys <laughs> hi lloyd <laughs> all right um but let's talk about uh little danny little danny played by danny lloyd uh danny torrance he also has suffered a lot of Maybe, I want to say physical abuse, because I remember there's a part it where Shelly Duvall talks about Jack breaking his arm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This kid is not mentally well. And then, um, I know, he's obviously been going through so much physical and mental and any other way that you can imagine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> abuse. Yeah. That, like, it seems, like, so fitting for the 70s. Mm-hmm. I mean, 80s, because that's when uh, this movie came out. Like, right. any other white man out there having a job, but also having a passion like kids is writing. Yeah. When you connect, it's like almost every other writer that you know is an alcoholic. Yeah, yeah, I get you. <laughs> you know, and if it's right into it, they're alcoholic and abusive. And that's exactly like he's just playing his part as a writer right there. Yeah. Like, and especially when, like, you find out that, like, he had to force himself to stop drinking because he hurt Danny. Yes, absolutely. And, like, and not only that, was because, like, cops were involved. Yeah. Because, like, he got asked. They got asked, you know, like, what happened, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's, like, this dude basically broke this kid's hand just because, like, he went into the room and asked for attention. Yes. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> um, the cinematography in this movie was freaking amazing yeah from the beginning where they're doing that shot over the lake that aerial view throughout that, like the whole mountain that was made by john alcott now i'm gonna give you one guess as to what other stanley kubrick movie do you think he did he only did one is it this it's space off odyssey no it's the same one as the other composers 
clockwork orange. He only did a clockwork orange, the shining, and then that's it. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, Stanley did a good job in finding these people. Yes. Like, these were some really good cult classic movies. Yes. Those two. And I feel it's like, mostly like, the storytelling of not that many words yeah that he's doing in each one like the shining that script seemed like so small yeah it was more more just following like danny throughout the whole fucking hotel speaking of shining we haven't talked about scatman crothers who tells danny that he has the shining yeah because he can connect with him telepathically that's how um he i feel like he already knew Mm -hmm. just by looking at him the character of halloran excuse me yes scatman crothers is the actor that played Halloran. Yeah. Dick. Dick Halloran. Dick, Dick Halloran, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, he seems like the only good character <laughs> in this goddamn movie. Yes. He's <laughs> For so, him to be killed. He's so nice. to. Oh, let's talk about that. I didn't... Okay. Like I said, I saw The Shining bits and pieces. I didn't see the whole thing. I didn't see his death coming until it was too late. Yeah. I mean, I felt like it was, something was going to happen yeah. when he gets there and freaking Jack is all run, uh, running around with a fucking axe. Yeah. And then, like, the only reason he even knew he was going was because he was talking to um, the caretaker before him. Yeah. The goal, his ghost. Oh, dude, they're so racist. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Like... You can tell Jack isn't, but the other dude, like, just the way that he keeps talking about Dick's character, you mm-hmm. know, Dick Holland, like... I'm pretty, I, sh- I'm really surprised even... they didn't even say the N-word. I'm, I'm, they I'm, did. Well, I was trying to be nice about it. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. Racist as heck. Yeah. Like, you can see, like, he just hated him. Mm-hmm. Like, as soon as he's like, your son asked for help. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What about that scene where where Danny is riding his tricycle and he gets stopped by those the twins. evil ass twins? Oh uh, no, I their first encounter. Yeah. The, his first encounter with the twins is um when they first get there. Right. And he, he's by himself mm-hmm. playing darts and like I feel like he senses them. Yeah. That when you think, he turns because around. You, you do see them walking into the room and walking out of the room. That Yeah. With no music, by the way. Like the cutscenes. Twins, Danny, twins, Danny, Again, twins, tension. Danny, oh twins. my god. Smile and walk away. <laughs> yeah. Just tension. See what I'm talking about? Yeah. That's how you build tension. You don't need the jump scares. You just built that tension. Oh my god. When this when this movie re- uh, reached the third act, oh, that was it was so satisfying. I mean, it was scary as hell to watch because you see, like I said, you see his descent into madness, but when you actually see it play out completely and he's just completely lost it. Like, I don't know if he was possessed or it was just his mental health. Like, I don't know. I can't fully put my finger on it. But when you see him reach that full darkness, it's just oh, so cringe. It's, cringe for I feel like it's something that was already in him yeah. that that house just brought out more. Because. In, in, I mean, house, hotel. Because. <laughs> no, no. House, hotel. Okay, what's up? But, like, I think that makes sense because that that final ending shot when the movie is over and you're getting the pan of the whole hotel and who do you see in the front? Jack. Jack Torrance right there. Yeah. So. But, it, and then like the weird thing is that it's so weird how like where are they in Colorado? Right? Colorado, yeah. Yeah, and then where do they live? They lived in Ohio? Like it's, a, it's basically a four hour drive yeah, from yeah. where they live. It's some small town for sure yeah. like down in the west. Yeah. Somewhere that it's so easy for them to get there so quickly and that it's like how did somebody from that hotel ma- manage to find somebody, you know, yeah. that knew exactly who to look uh, for? Yeah, exactly. Because it's like, it could have been any other family, right? But it was Jack's family with Danny. Somebody that's going to be able to stop it. I feel like it was probably like one of those things, you know, how, because the hotel is alive, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> right, absolutely. It's a prison for people, basically. Yeah, exactly. And that's a real hotel, by the way. A working it, it hotel is. in Colorado. Yeah, which it is. it is on my bucket list to visit one day. I do want to visit it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in room 237. Have you heard any of the conspiracy theories revolving this movie? 
No. Okay. Well, I did some research on some of these conspiracy theories, and I want to get your take on it, okay? Okay. The first one uh, basically states that the whole movie was based about Native Americans. And after I reviewed the movie, it does make sense because the character of, of Stuart Omen, which is the one that interviews Jack, uh, Jack Torrance, mm-hmm. you do notice that he has, he has a red, white, and blue flag on his desk. And literally in the movie, they said it was built over an Indian burial ground. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And in the hotel... No, it was... Yeah, from those... That's from, like, when... Brings you back to when uh, Shelley Duvall is talking about what happened there. Yes. So, basically, those people that died that she's talking about, that's where they built the hotel over their bodies, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and then... If you notice in the movie, there's a lot of depictions of Native American art. Like, there's... In in the main hall, you see, like, Native American uh, carpets. Uh, You just see a lot of... uh, And you see also sandpaper drawings on the walls and stuff like that. Did you notice any of that? I did not pay attention to, like, the paintings and all that. I didn't either until I looked into these theories and... They're there, like they're so yeah. hidden. So well, it's also like like how how Stanley Kubrick uh, directed. Uh, 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 sorry, he points out that Danny is gonna be the victim in this movie by in certain shots when he's talking to to Halloran in the background. You see knives pointing at his head. Yeah, yeah. There's two scenes when they're in the kitchen when they first arrive to the hotel. He's talking to Halloran, and if you notice the way he shot it, you see. From behind him, just a set of knives just dangling over his head on one shot. And then he turns it to the right. And there's another set of knives just dangling over his head. Wow, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. I, I'm telling you, I didn't either until I looked into these uh, theories. These theories, these okay. theories. And you're just like, holy shit, it was actually there. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the second theory was that this movie is uh, basically saying that the 1969 moon landing was faked. How? Because there's a big theory that obviously you've heard that the moon landing with Apollo 11 was faked, mm-hmm. and but they're saying that th- that NASA hires Stanley Kubrick to direct the moon landing. Oh my god! This is what they're saying. No, but, it makes sense because he would make it so. And there's good. also hidden messages, according to what I saw in this theory. Uh huh. There's hidden messages when they're in the pantry in the kitchen uh. over the head of Halloran. There's Tang. Now Tang is the most popular drink. Of the, of, of, the, of the astronauts Actually, at that time. I remember as a kid, my dad would be like, you don't like Tang? I sure don't string Tang. See? And I'm like, what does that mean? And also, if you notice in one of the scenes, Danny is wearing an Apollo 11 sweater. Yeah, that's the one where like he comes out traumatized mm-hmm. after he sees the lady. Uh-huh. And also, the third uh, uh, spec about this conspiracy, conspiracy in the book... Room ter- uh, room 237 uh-huh. is actually room 217. They changed it to room 237 because uh, <laughs> specifically, yeah. the moon is 237 miles away from Earth. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. That is literally what this theory is saying. So they're saying that the moon landing was fake and it was directed by Stanley Kubrick. And in this movie, he's owning up to it. And it's basically an apology to America for making the moon landing. Yeah, can you believe that shit? What the? Yes! Now, what do you think about that one? That one was the trippiest one that I read. But there's a couple more. I need to make further investigation on that. Yes, <laughs> look into it. Just to see how far it goes, you oh know? Oh my god. There's, I saw, I mean, this whole set was like 15 minutes, 15, conspiracy 20 minutes. Conspiracy theories are what keep me alive. <laughs> oh, I love a good conspiracy. When it's a good conspiracy theory, that there's more than one video on it. It has to be true. The Mandela effect. I feel like... The Mandela like, effect. That's another one. Every time I have a deja vu, I swear to you, I'm always like, fuck, another universe has been destroyed. <laughs> and now all those memories, I'm like moving into this. <laughs> because that's what they say, you yeah. know? Each... Um, we There's so many different universes. Right. And each one is... You're living a different life. I did hear that, yeah. Yeah. And then like supposedly what they say is that whenever you have deja vu, is that universe has been destroyed and like whatever decision that you making now it's like it's all on you <laughs> really yeah it's like um what is because you know they're all parallel universes yes. we're all living the same uh 
we're all living the same life, only we're doing different actions yeah. in each one. Right. And like one, we could have never met. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> like I... we could have just stayed neighbors and never talked to each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, another one, like I wouldn't even have been living here. I would have been somewhere else. It's fucking crazy, you know? So it's basically like the, not, it's not the theory of evolution, it's the, um, it's the, just those memories that you're getting. Yeah. It's just like, that's why certain people remember certain things. It's, it, it, it's like the law of effect. Every action has an equal reaction. reaction. Yeah, because like, when I'm looking at those, when I used to watch those Mandela effects, I'm yeah. like, okay, I definitely remember that. I don't remember that, you know? And then there would be the people that remember the one that I don't. And it's like, what are you talking about, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, like when they say that uh, at the end of... Uh, we are the champions. Everybody says of the world, but the actual song doesn't say of the world. It's just people adding on to it. I know. I sing it like that yeah. <laughs> when it ends because I remember Freddie Mercury just going of the world and yeah. it just like stopped. Yeah. Him going world at the end, you know? Yeah. And that's how I remember it. And then when I hear it again, I sing that part and I'm like, I know that part isn't there. Yeah. Because it's already in my head. Well, it's, I'm actually glad you brought up that Mandela effect because another theory about this movie was that it's all, uh, the whole movie is based of mirrors. Because if you notice in the movie, uh, they're always looking into mirrors. There's a scene specifically where Jack Nicholson gets up and his whole conversation with his wife is him looking at himself in the mirror. When Danny writes the infamous Red Rum, she doesn't read it correctly until she looks in the mirror. Yeah. Do you understand that? Yeah. But, I feel that Jack starts looking at the mirrors because of that incident that he had with the lady in 237. Yes. Like, he didn't really see her see her until he seen her from the in mirror. In the mirror, exactly. Yeah. Like, if he had never seen her in the mirror, he would have <laughs> still been looking at her as that young woman that um, she portrays herself to be. Yes. And it, I feel that's why he starts looking at mirrors. Because <laughs> I did notice, like, that part, like, when... After that, he starts, like, whenever he's talking to somebody, he has to look at the mirror. Yeah. Just to make sure that he's actually looking at that person. Uh-huh. And, like, I wasn't going to bring that mirror part up, but it didn't feel like something important. But no, the thing it, you brought that I didn't, whole no, brought up. When I watched the movie, I didn't think anything of it. No? Until it was brought up to me in that conspiracy video. Seriously? And I said, holy shit, that makes sense. Yeah. Like, because... You bring that up, like, and, uh, it, it all comes in, you know? Yeah, well, make, I mean, like I said, it didn't make sense to me because, hell, I've looked in the mirror and I've talked to myself. <laughs> so I was like, it's just a natural human thing to do. Yeah. But when they're mentioning it in conspiracies based for this movie, I, uh, I'll, I'm going to have to take a look at it. But holy shit, it does make sense. Yeah. So let me break it down another of these conspiracies, okay? Okay. Because these are actually really good. And I wrote a, bunch, I wrote a few more of these down. Because I was like, okay. So, another theory is that the movie is basically telling you that they're in hell. Uh, because every single... No and I and it goes back to what I told you about the knives over mm -hmm. under Danny. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, sometimes the layouts change. There's a scene where um, Wendy and Jack are talking, I believe it was in the Colorado room. And there's a chair behind Jack in one cut, cut to Wendy... Cut back to Jack, that chair's not there anymore. Cut back to Wendy, cut back to Jack, that chair's there again. <laughs> you get that? What? <laughs> There's also another scene in the beginning of the movie when Halloran is giving them the tour. They go into a refrigerator, one end, and come out the other, and the background is different. <laughs> okay. See? Okay. So they're basically saying that this movie... Uh, they're, is it a coincidence that all these changes are happening? Because they're saying that this movie is... It's basically showing you that these guys are already in hell. I... Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a trippy one, I'm telling no, you. No, <laughs> the thing is that after watching Dr. Sleep... Yeah. You're like... Which is our next review, Dr. Yeah, Sleep. Next time. Um, you, can, you can tell already, like... Why those creepy things are happening. Yeah. The house is alive. The house. Yeah. The house is alive. So it's like subtly like dropping hints on there that like, oh, I'm watching you, you know? Yeah. Without them really, really knowing until like they finally are like, fuck it. <laughs> What's up, Jack? You want a drink? <laughs> you know? Because 
it just like it just stops out of nowhere you know subtle things and it's like all him now yeah and that, uh, the final conspiracy that I looked into was that uh, basically the Overlook Hotel is mind controlled that everything that they're going through is one giant hallucination brought in by a government science experiment and the notes for this because I wrote these down okay uh it's a it's a, basically the overlook hotel is a front uh, test to mind control they're testing jack's family uh they're test uh shit how can i word this without sounding like an idiot because i'm trying to get this right uh in the very beginning of the movie when he's talking to to, to Stuart omen mm-hmm. there's a guy sitting there called bill watson next uh, to, the one that he calls in his character is never real to be anything he's just there yeah. When you see him walking outside of the hotel, they're giving them a tour. Bill Watson is just there. They're saying that he's part of the government. And this, then the, the Torrances are their subjects for mind control. Another thing that, because uh, in one of the scenes, when we go back to when uh, Danny sees the twins for the first time, mm-hmm. behind them, there's a poster with a skier and the word monarch in the bottom. Okay? Okay. Now... They're saying why would uh why would Kubrick put this in the movie when in the very beginning they said that they there's no ski. exactly yeah. there is no skiing so what's Monarch Monarch Mountain which is where which is the mountain around the hotel um which is uh Monarch is also a CIA term for mind control really yes ma'am okay yeah. <laughs> Because uh, that character, they never really... Well, he was just there to show Jack around. But he never speaks except the constant, mm-hmm. Because when Jack gets to the interview, the first person that they want in that room is who? That guy. Bill Watson. Yeah, I don't even know his name. Cause yeah. Because he, he wasn't that big, you know? But he's always there. Yeah, okay. In the background. So they're saying that the Bill Watson character is part of the government <laughs> and he's picked the Torrances to be part of his mind control experiment. I want to know who was the first person to think of this. <laughs> I don't... These are, this is on YouTube. You can find all of this on YouTube. <laughs> Those conspiracy theories when they start going into like... Yes! <laughs> uh, government issues kind of stuff. It's like, well, where does your mind I take you? Like I said, I didn't think too much of it. But when they started talking about Bill Watson, I was like... Yeah, who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, because, like, he was just there, just... You're right. <laughs> yeah. He was just there. Think about it. He's literally just there. Yeah, because just... Stuart is the one that's telling him he's going to show you yes. what you're going to be doing and all the things that you have to take care yes. of. Yes. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's all he's doing. If you see him walking outside of the hotel, he's just behind them the whole time. <laughs> creepy and his title is never actually given to us of what he does there I thought he was the caretaker no Bill Watson oh isn't he no because he's the one that's going to show Jack no. what he has to do they never officially say what his title is they just call him into the room for the interview that is weird though exactly but like why does that hotel manager need that guy there <laughs> and mind control experiment mind control come on <laughs> so those were some of the theories I looked up on based on this movie. I'm pretty sure there's a hell of a lot more that I haven't even found. Um, but you guys can, if you guys are listening to this and you guys are more interested, you're more than welcome to find these. They're all out, they're all on YouTube. I know because we we've only just been through like the first half of the movie. We've only talked about the first half of the movie. We yeah, haven't even talked even... about the ending, not the middle. Just, Nothing. Th- this is just all based on the first half of the movie. Exactly. It has so much, like, I feel like this can keep going on. There's so many. Uh, we could record for as long as we want. <laughs> this is all going out on SoundCloud anyway. SoundCloud doesn't give me a time limit. Yeah, but there's so many theories that you would have to go into. Yeah. Because it... Does yeah. that mean we're going to make a part two <laughs> <laughs> of nothing but theories? I mean... We could do a bonus the, episode in the future. Do they want it? Yeah, you know what, guys? If you guys want us to do a conspiracy theories on The Shining, leave us a comment. Yeah, just let us know. Let us know. And I'm I'm serious. Let us know if you guys want us to do a whole episode of nothing but conspiracy theories. And not even just The Shining. On movies in general. Yeah. There's a lot of movies that have conspiracy theories. Like The Twilight Zone. Inception has a lot of conspiracy (laughs) theories. So many. Even the Star Wars movies have uh, conspiracy theories on them, dude. (laughs) 
Jesus. So like I said, leave us a comment. Let us know if you guys want to see it or you guys want to hear it. We'll do it. Yeah. You know? But um, let's go. Let's do talk about the rest of this movie. (laughs) All right. So, um, you know that door scene? Yes. Dude, do you know how long it took them? That the one with the elevator? No, the door scene. The one where like... Oh, with the the, 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 the axe. With the axe, yeah. Where Jack Nicholson says the infamous... Here's Johnny. Here's Johnny. Yeah. That was also one of those traumatic experiences that... I'm sorry, put my hand <laughs> near my face. So those that was one of those also traumatic experiences that Shelly Duvall did go through. Because they, it took them three days. Like, that's how many times freaking Stanley wanted to do it. Really? Until he felt like it was good. Really? Three days with, and they used 60 doors. Oh my god, I feel so bad for this lady. The more I hear about the treatment of Shelly Duvall, the more I understand why she is the way she is today. Have you seen her today? No. My god. Did that, she go that heavy woman, on drugs? That woman is not in a mental state. She was on Dr. Phil maybe about six months ago. Uh-huh. And she's just not mentally there, dude. At all. I feel so bad for this lady because she was such a great actress. I feel like after this, she should have taken the break that she, like... Yeah. Just so she can recover. Because it really was traumatic, you know? Yeah. But that's the thing about Hollywood, dude. Hollywood, when, when, when you get hot and your name is known, it's just so hard to stop because you just... You're afraid of, like... What is it? It's It's... It's hard to be famous, but it's even harder to be infamous. You understand that? Yeah. Like, I just... Oh, man. I feel so Anybody bad. can be famous. Yes. You know? Yeah. Anybody can be famous, but, like... What are you putting out there that they're going to remember you for? And I feel that's what Shelley did with this... Yeah. With this movie. Tell me more. Um, That scene with the freaking blood. Yeah. That was her first... That was her first time seeing something happening, right? Yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, when she's finally realizing there's something wrong with this house, you know? Yeah. Like, I wonder I wonder what they did to prepare her for that. Probably yelled at her. Get her like, <laughs> shit. Or he must have been like, nobody pay attention to her. Oh, my God. I would love to have a sit down with Kubrick and just be like, what why? the fuck were you thinking? <laughs> yeah, why? <laughs> <laughs> um yeah that that whole elevator door with the blood coming out uh-huh. has to be one of the most iconic iconic shots yeah. ever made you know um the ending with uh jack torrance in the snow frozen yeah i mean is he really dead we don't know yeah i didn't they don't say anything. They don't say that he's dead. He's frozen. Yeah. But frozen things can be thought out. Yeah, he could have still been breathing. Mm-hmm. He could have had like a low blood, a blood, <laughs> a low pulse. Yeah. But we don't know. Yeah. Because all they show is, is him frozen to death and then that shot of the picture frame where he's at. Mm-hmm. They could have, he could still be alive somewhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? But they just abandoned the hotel, right? Yeah, they just abandoned the hotel. They didn't... I, I We don't know what happened afterwards. Yeah. But, I mean, you know what happened years later, because you see, obviously, Dr. Sleep is yeah. the sequel to The Shining. But, you know, people are calling... A lot of people call this movie the greatest horror movie of all time. Do you agree? Do you disagree? It's a really good uh, psychological movie. Right. Um... I mean, if you were to call it a thriller, number one. Yeah, definitely. Number one. Yeah, because it's more psychological things that are going on yeah. than the actual horror for it. Yeah. You know? Uh, we Maybe they're just thinking it's really good horror just because, like, oh, he had cabin fever, there's ghosts there, murders, perfect, you know? Yeah, yeah. They're, like, not really watching it for what it is. <laughs> Uh, but I wouldn't consider it a horror movie. Right. You know? Have you uh, read any of Stephen King's novels? I've always tried to. 
but every single book that I've ever uh, picked up has been a movie that I've seen. Okay. So, um... You've never read the book and watched the movie to do a comparison? No. Okay. But I do know there's so many things that they do leave out from the books. Absolutely. That I'll be like, hey, if they would have added this on here, it would have been such a great movie, you yeah. know? Like, woo! The Lovely Bones. Is that a Stephen King novel? No, 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 no. But okay. that's another movie. Okay. You know? Yeah. Like, that one, it's a really great movie. I love... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the movie. It's a really great movie, and I'm glad that they didn't, like, put everything that was in that book. Yeah. Because that scene when um, she gets... Uh, she's in the cornfield, mm-hmm. and in the book, like, they go into a description that, like, when he takes her down there, he rapes her, okay. and he kills her. Yeah. In the movie, all you know is that she's there, and he's... You killed her. Yeah. That's all that's, you say. That's all you know. You know? And But in the book, it, like, it gives you, like, this whole thing. And I haven't even seen read the book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? That's why I'm telling you, like, uh, if it's, like, something that, like, I really want to know, because oh, there'll be so many critics for it, that I'll, I'll have to go do the research for it. The, the books, I mean, I, I like, when I was in high school, I read more books than I do now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't really have the patience to read. I do a lot of audiobooks. I'll give myself that, okay? okay I do okay. audiobooks. I have somebody else to read it to me like I'm a fucking child. You know? <laughs> but <clears throat> the books that I read in high school were like Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. Okay. Lost World, which by the way, the book, Jurassic Park and the movie are like maybe 60% the same. Okay. There's a lot more violence in the book. Obviously. A hell of a lot more violence yeah. in the book. So is The Lost World. But... Uh, coming back to, to Stephen King, the one book that I read that when they made the movie mm-hmm. was exactly like the book, and I was so happy that they did it, was The Mist. Okay. Have you seen The Mist? Yeah. Oh, my God. I read that book in high school. I mean, it's a small, it's a, a novella. It's like maybe 50 to 60 pages. Okay. But when they made the movie... It was exactly like the book in so many ways. I feel like because it was such much more shorter shorter yeah. of a, a book that he did. Yeah. That they were really able to put every single detail <sighs> that he had in I it. I was so happy. Because even with uh, It. Yeah. Absolutely. Like even with It, like the TV uh, miniseries and the, the actual movie that they made now. Doesn't even compare to the book. No. They no. left out so many things, you know. Even the... the um, with the movie that they just did, you yeah, know? Yeah, They still left out so many things, and I just feel like... I mean, you understand it, why they yeah. left out a bunch of the stuff, because a lot of the it, the, the torture as children is a lot more sexual than, than they yeah, showed in the movie. Yeah, because there were so many sex scenes, yeah. apparently. Yes. Have with you, the kids. Have you read the book? No. Oh, my I'm God. I'm telling you. You haven't read the book? No, no, no. I I'm, read that I'm book. I'm telling you, like, I know so many things about, like, movies yeah. that are, like, originally books, like, without even reading the damn I, book. I read the book. <laughs> it's, like, a thousand pages long. Yeah. But I read I, the oh, book. I, I definitely. I remember yeah. it in my library. There were so many different um, copies of it, but they were always so fucking thick. Yeah. And it's, like... I'm not gonna read this. But, okay, okay. So <laughs> I'll just okay. So you didn't read any of the Stephen King's books, okay? No. So let's dumb it down because I know I read a lot of these books. Did you read any of the Goosebumps books? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. What the hell? It's because uh, I mostly just see the Stephen King movies or miniseries that he ever put out. Yeah. Because my parents were great, big fans. You know. Yeah. That's all like with their horror things. They're very big fans on that. Right. So I, that's why uh, The Shining is not even a horror movie to me. Yeah. You know, it's more like a thriller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know? Yeah. Suspenseful, but not a horror movie okay. at all. So I know you haven't read the books, but what would you consider to be your favorite Stephen King adaptation? I know you haven't read the books, but just based on what you saw on the movie, would you be like, I like that one? The most. Now, it doesn't have to... I mean, I... Obviously, I, I like The Mist. I also like um, Village of the Damned. Okay. Which is a bo- old 94 movie with Christopher Reeve and Kirstie Alley when she did horror. That's right. The Kirstie Alley. I think I've seen it. <laughs> it's with the little kids that have all white hair. and they yeah. t- Oh, my God. 
God, tell me why I've been trying to figure out the name of that movie forever. Because I'm like, I love that movie. Because mm-hmm. it was so fucking good. I remember, like, they're creepy. They live in... Uh, why? Like, yeah. they're aliens? Yeah. What the fuck they're, are they? Yeah. You know? I remember, like, watching that when my parents rented that movie. <laughs> VHS. I remember going to the movie Blockbuster, I guess. And, like... Oh, just that, licking the, that the hurt tapes. my heart. <laughs> and just being... Them picking out the Stephen King ones were, like... And I was, like... That looks creepy. It looks scary. I don't want to watch it. But did I watch it? I miss Blockbuster. Blockbuster had... That hurts my heart that it's not around. (laughs) I mean, it's in Alaska. The (laughs) only one. The only one. But I miss Blockbuster. You know how much money Blockbuster would make nowadays? Damn. But, uh, yeah. So it's called Village of the Damned. All right. I I keep... It's because it's you're so close. You're going to buy it now. You're going to find it and you're going to buy it. Yeah, it's because it's so close of uh, remembering the mm-hmm. movies um, with that one and uh, Children of the Corn. Okay. I, I can I can see how you that... You know? Another like, Stephen King. Yeah. You know, so it's like... Because they're both in like rural rural towns, right? Yes, rural towns. And it's like... I'm sorry. In Maine. Yeah, you know? Isn't that where he's from? Or yes. That's where all of them are. There's, there was right? also a Stephen King actual TV series called Under the Dome. Mm-hmm. I read that book. I have that book and I need to find it because I want to reread it. Mm-hmm. But the series was nothing like the book. No? Nothing like the book. And I was so pissed off because <laughs> there was... There was excerpts on it there was pieces of the book and like uh, i know in the very first episode of the the show the the dome itself when it's coming down in the town cuts a cow in half oh yeah and they show that in the series okay that that. was one thing that was in the book that was like first episode first episode yeah (laughs) um i think it's on hulu i have to look for it if it's on hulu i'm gonna sit down and watch it but there was like three seasons and one book i don't think they could break out Three seasons in one book. Well, they probably try to extend each chapter into a season, you know? Yeah. A lot of them do that. But I hardly remember that show, though. I I do remember coming out on TV. Right. You know? Well, I mean, it wasn't watched that much. I mean, people watched it. I mean, honestly, it went on for three seasons. Yeah, So people watched it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But after I was... And I caught on maybe five episodes of season one, but... After I saw that they weren't sticking with the book, I'm like, I don't want to see this shit They're anymore. just, like, probably already giving up with it and trying to figure out an easier way to just... And you would think that if they gave you three seasons, fuck, do something with it, you know? Get them... Read the damn book, <laughs> you know? But, um... All right, let's, let's wrap this episode up. Do you have anything else to tell us about The Shining? Uh, let me just... Glance of my notes. Land Prince, notes. get down. Prince is climbing on the door right now because she saw a bird. I don't know. Prince is crazy like her mama. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. Oh, I wish I could have recorded the look of your, of your face. Uh, oh, Jesus. If, if I can kill, I would have been dead already. Uh, I'm good. Like, we went through so many things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. What do you... Give this movie out of, this movie out of ten. Ten. Absolutely. Definitely. I wrote the exact same thing. It's a ten. I give it a hundred out of ten, but I'm gonna obviously tell you ten. I I, I don't I don't blame you one. Every <laughs> time they ask me about Halloween, what do you give this? Uh one hundred out of ten. One hundred out of ten. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. So let's wrap this one up for now. Uh next week we are doing Doctor Sleep, which is the sequel to The Shining. Ooh. So that's gonna be next week. For right now, this is Oscar. And this is Araceli. And this has been... Have Have you seen seen this yet? yet? Bye. Bye.